Next, I want to show you how to make a rabbited drawer front. This drawer front is distinguished by a 3 8 inch rabbit all the way around the drawer front. The backs and sides of your rabbited drawer are cut exactly the same as your flush drawer. The only difference is your rabbited drawer front. You dimension your material three quarters of an inch wider and three quarters of an inch longer than your drawer opening. Additionally, you must cut a 3 8 inch rabbit all the way around the drawer front. I have marked what will be the bottom of my drawer with a B as I do in my normal flush drawer. Placing the material under the top clamp, we must reposition our left and right stops to make up for the 3 8 inch rabbit that we have cut around here. We want this front edge to be 3 16 of an inch underneath the template here. Additionally, since the portion of the board that we want to cut our sockets in is now 3 8 of an inch farther back from the front edge of the Omni jig, we need to move our template back 3 8 of an inch. A simpler way to make this adjustment is to use a rabbiting spacer block. This is no more than a 3 quarter inch piece of material with a 3 8 inch shoulder cut on one end. To use a rabbiting spacer block, place it under the front bar clamp with a 3 8 inch shoulder facing towards the jig and slightly below the top surface of the Omni jig. Lock it in position. Next, making sure that the bottom edge of your drawer is against your right hand stop block, bring your material forward and flush with your spacer block. You notice that this brings the entire piece of material 3 8 of an inch farther forward, bringing this edge on your original cutting line. Lock this in position. When you cut your dovetails now, you'll cut the proper depth dovetail for your rabbit drawer front. Again, we are only cutting the drawer front by itself. Move your spacer block and your drawer front to the opposite side of the Omni jig. Again, be sure to place the bottom edge of your drawer front against your stop block. There you have your completed rabbited drawer front. If all the Omni jig did was cut half inch, half blind dovetails better than any other jig on the market, I'd buy it. But the Omni jig does far more than that. With the addition of a few accessory templates, guide bushings, and router bits, you can really add a professional touch to your projects that you'll be proud of. For example, I just demonstrated the half inch, half blind dovetail joint. A quarter inch half blind dovetail joint can be cut using the quarter inch accessory template, a quarter inch dovetail bit, and a 5 16 inch guide bushing. Setup procedure for the quarter inch dovetail is the same as for the half inch dovetail. Positioning of the template and the stops will differ. The dimensions are listed in your instruction manual. As I mentioned earlier, machine cut dovetails were often distinguished by their set size and spacing, whereas hand cut dovetails often varied in size and spacing. The Omni jig now gives the craftsman the ability to cut dovetails that have the appearance of being hand cut. The first additional dovetail I would like to demonstrate is the half inch, half blind dovetail with two inch spacing. This is a beautiful joint for exposed joinery and was used in early contemporary furniture.
Equipment needed to cut the half inch hand dovetails with two inch spacing includes a router, two dovetail templates, the pin template and the tail template, the half inch router bit, and the 5 8 inch guide bushing. These two items come with the basic Omni jig. While the half inch dovetails with two inch spacing may be cut on any width of board from two and a quarter inches to 16 inches, there are certain widths that are more ideal than others. These widths are determined by the formula two times the number of pins plus one eighth of an inch. For my demonstration today, I'll be cutting dovetails with two pins. Therefore, the width of my board will be two times two plus one eighth of an inch or four and one eighth inches. Remember I mentioned earlier that the half inch hand dovetails are cut with two templates, a tail template, which I marked on the template, and a pin template. I will begin our demonstration with the tail template. Here you see the Omni jig and the tail board properly positioned for cutting our tails. The way this was achieved was by first placing the pin board under the front clamp, raising it approximately a quarter of an inch above the surface of the Omni jig. Next, slide your tail board under the top clamp, butt it firmly against the pin board, and lock it into position. Next, I placed the finger template on top of the top board and locked it down into place, making sure that it was level all the way across the Omni jig. The next thing to do is to properly position the tail board in respect to the fingers on the template. To do this, the distance from the front edge of the tail board to the back of the finger template must be equal to the thickness of your pin board plus one eighth of an inch. The tail board is then repositioned so that the distance from the outside edge of the board to the inside of this finger is equal to the outside edge of the board to the inside of this finger. Once the tail board is properly positioned, slide the stop lock over and lock it in position. Next, remove the pin board. Remember that the tails and pins are routed separately. For this cut, there's no change in the setup of the router that we had for the half inch, half blind dovetail. Here you see the Omni jig set up for proper cutting of the pin board. First, a piece of scrap material at least one inch wider than the pin board and the same thickness as the tail board is placed under the top clamp. Then the pin template is placed on top of this piece of scrap material in the same position as your previous tail template. Next your pin board is positioned under the front clamp with the inside of the drawer out and butted up against the underside of the template. The pin template is positioned so that the front edge evenly overlaps the pin board so that we can cut all the way through the pin board. Additionally, this dimension from here to here is equal to the dimension from here to here. With your pin board properly positioned, slide your stop over and lock it down. Remember that all cuts will be made on this side of the fixture. To ensure a tight fit of this joint, you must make a slight cut on the inside corners of your pins. Trim these corners off just slightly. This is done because your tails have a radius in the corners where your pins have squared edges. By trimming the inside corners of your pins, you've now created a radius, and this will ensure a perfect fit. 